Hi there, and welcome to Telefunkian. Today's video is one in a series on the vintage Roland CR78 analog drum machine. In this episode, we'll be selecting and installing a MIDI kit for the CR78 and demonstrating how to use it. This video will document the installation process and show you how you can install a MIDI kit in the CR78 without any external modifications and keep your machine looking stock. If this sounds interesting, stay tuned. Roland CR78 was released in 1978, three years before MIDI was first described by Dave Smith and Chet Wood in their seminal paper, Universal Music Interface, first presented to the Audio Engineering Society in 1981. Since MIDI was standardized in 1983, it's been the de facto standard for communicating with musical instruments. As cutting edge as the CR78 may have been in 1978, the inability to control it with modern day sequencing software limits its utility in most studios. A MIDI kit would allow us to more comfortably integrate the CR78 into a modern studio by allowing us to sync the drum machine to a MIDI clock and to control its various voices using our favorite sequencing software. A number of different vendors have developed MIDI solutions for the CR78, and I'll compare a few of them here for your convenience. Each of these MIDI kits receives MIDI data from a MIDI controller, sequencer, or DAW and converts the MIDI data to signals that trigger the clock and the sounds on the CR78. The kits differ in the way that they respond to velocity information, however, with some kits giving true velocity sensitivity on each sound, and others using velocity information to determine if the onboard accent function should be activated. Accent increases the volume of all the voices sounding at that particular time on the time grid. Some kits allow for mapping or remapping of drum notes using your DAW software or ancillary programs that come with the kit, while the Tontec kit has each sound pre-mapped to predetermined immutable note values. The Tontec kit is the only kit we've looked at that actually increases the physical memory available in the machine itself for storing user patterns increasing the onboard storage from 4 to 15 user presets. Most kits have only a MIDI input and force you to assume that the CR78 is the last item in the MIDI chain, something that can be an inconvenience in larger studios unless you have a MIDI patch bay. One kit, made by Kenton, features MIDI in, out, and through functionality. The kits also differ significantly in the complexity of their installation. The Kenton kit is only available as a factory installation, which means that you have to ship your drum machine to England, where the highly skilled team at Kenton will expertly install their kit in their factory. Others require installation of a new PCB that mounts to the rear panel, and some require you to solder trigger wires for each individual voice to the appropriate trigger points on the voice PCB. The kit I've selected for installation on this CR78 is the Tontec CPU Replacement and MIDI Kit. I've chosen the Tontec kit for a whole host of reasons. In my opinion, it works smarter, not harder. The Tontec kit is based on a complete deconstruction, reverse engineering, and re-engineering of the original CR78 operating system. It integrates seamlessly with the CR78 architecture, fully replacing the outdated NEC CPU, the EEPROM, and the RAM. As a result of its design, the CR78 no longer requires an onboard battery to retain user programs, nor does it require the negative 5-volt rail whose sole task was to provide power to the EEPROM. For more background on the CR78's power supply and the risks associated with keeping the rechargeable battery, check out our other videos on the CR78. Another thing I like about the Tontec kit is the way in which it emulates the onboard user programming using the WS1. The biggest surprise, though, is that of the various kits for the CR78, the Tontec kit is by far the most straightforward to install and is offered at the lowest price. All of these features are due to the designer, Bob Grieb, a retired electronic engineer who developed and sells this terrific product. For more information, check out the Tontec website. If you've been around any kind of synthesizer over the last 40 years, you're probably familiar with the 5-pin DIN plugs and the cables we refer to as MIDI cables. 
What you might not realize is that the data on a MIDI cable is transferred through just two wires. One of these wires provides a current source analogous to a positive voltage, and the other acts as a current sink analogous to a ground. A third wire in the cable acts as a shield, ideally preventing the introduction of noise, while the other two pins in a MIDI cable are unconnected. MIDI can be carried on just two wires because it's a serial data transmission. The normal state of an idle MIDI signal is high. The signal drops low for one start bit before eight data bits and a final stop bit. The data is moving at a glacial pace in comparison to modern data transmission standards. With a baud rate of 31.25K, somewhat leisurely in comparison to your 5 GHz Wi-Fi that moves at more than 150 times faster. Over the last number of years, some equipment manufacturers have been using 1 8 inch tip ring sleeve connectors for transmitting MIDI data, especially in cases where space is at a premium. This works perfectly well, but as you'll see later in this video, the implementation of this solution has yet to be standardized resulting in potential mix-ups when trying to connect equipment using these types of connectors. This will become relevant as we install our kit and decide to forego the use of the included 5-pin DIN connector in order to keep the installation as stealthy as possible. Not to worry, follow along and you'll be fine. So without further ado, let's get started. Well, we have the CR78 set up and we're in the process of testing the Tontec CR78 MIDI MCU replacement. And uh, one of the first things that we can look at is uh, whether or not the new CPU is able to track to MIDI clock. And this is... Uh, done by simply connecting to any kind of device sequencer or the like could be a, a DAW that is outputting MIDI clock and right now I'm using this Arturia BeatStep Pro as a device that I can use to input both MIDI notes and MIDI clock and all we do is we connect the CR78 and it accepts the MIDI clock and we can control the tempo using the Arturia and start and stop the CR78 
using the Arturia, we still retain functions like uh, the fade in and out. And the ability to mix uh, all of the various sounds. So right now we're just listening to the Wiro. Uh, this particular pattern does not have any uh, metallic beat. Uh, but we can also, of course, change the patterns and play any of the preset patterns. Just one familiar example. The CR78 with the installed Tontec MIDI replacement CPU has the ability to function as a uh, MIDI controlled module. We enter this mode by pressing in the waltz, shuffle, and slow rock buttons all at the same time. And then we can uh, simply trigger any of the drum notes which are mapped to different MIDI notes. And there are 15 different sounds. And uh, I'll just make sure that we've got all, everything turned up. So we have the kick, the snare, the rim shot, hi-hat, cymbal, maracas, claves, cowbell, the high bongo, low bongo, low conga, the tambourine, that's a low note, that's a high note, and the Wii row, this is the the uh, the low Wii row pitch, and then the high Wii row pitch is achieved by pressing down this note, which is a C60, MIDI note 60. So the 15 sounds can be accessed through MIDI and activated at will. And of course, this allows you to essentially play any kind of pattern that you could imagine using your DAW. And of course, again, we can change the mix or the sound of each of these by um, mixing using the features available on the front panel of the instrument. So the velocity, the velocity of the MIDI notes that we're sending to the CR78 control the accent function. If the velocity value is above 64, the accent will be triggered along with the sound. And the front panel accent amount functions normally. So if we turn the accent up all the way, we're triggering it there. And you can hear what it sounds like. when we have the accent turned up all the way. There's really quite a difference in the volume. And we can change this using this analog control to make it much more subtle if we so choose. The other function uh, that the Tontec replacement CPU offers us is the ability to program the CR78 in a way that is much more accessible than uh, it, it was previously. And it expands the program memory so that we now have 15 programs that we can save and recall. These 15 programs are accessed through these four program rhythm buttons. And we can now, rather than pressing one at a time, we can access them in combinations. So that gives us essentially four to the power of two, or rather two to the power of four, or 16 minus one pattern, because we can't press down all four of these buttons at one time. Only uh, We only have access to 15 patterns. And so that, for example, would give us access to pattern one, uh, pattern two, and so on. So in order to uh, edit programs, 
we need to enter into the program edit mode in the CR78. The way we access the program edit mode is by pressing in shuffle, slow rock, and swing together so that they stay in the in position. There we are. Now, if we want to clear a pattern, we've selected our pattern, we move the memory play all button to the all position, and we press clear. If we go to memory and press clear, we're only clearing the instrument selected on the given track. There are four tracks within each program in the memory function. We can record four different instruments into the memory. So if we wish to clear this pattern, pattern one, after we've entered the program mode, we go to all, press clear, that deletes the pattern, and we then go to memory and we can begin writing. We write with a combination of pressing this button, which is normally the manual variation or fill button, and either having this switch in the auto position or in the manual position. If we press this button while the switch is in the auto position, this gives us a note. And so I'm on the bass drum currently, and we have an eight uh, step per measure pattern selected. So if I press auto seven times, and manual once, we hear that cowbell that's denoting a rest. I can then go to all, and what that does is it moves us back to the beginning of the beat, uh, of the measure rather, and I can exit the the programming mode and press start. And we're listening to the automatic uh, tambourine and wiro, etc. So in order to enter the programming mode, we press shuffles, slow rock and swing all at the same time so that they stay in. We go to all, clear, and that clears our pattern one. We're at eight uh, steps per measure. And what we're going to do is enter uh, a bass drum, erase the pattern, go to memory one, two, three, eight kicks. <clears throat> we then move to all, uh, come to the snare drum, go to memory, and we have And we can play this back now. And I think you get the idea. Um, and using this methodology, we can program in uh, four 
instrument selections into each individual program, layer these up, and they will be combined with the metallic beat, the tambourine, and the wiro, as uh, all the other preset patterns are. And we can also use the variation and fill uh, to use these patterns to program or uh, an arrangement. I've confirmed that the Tontec MIDI kit is functioning as it should. And all of this has been done using the MIDI uh, jack that is supplied with the kit, which is perfectly fine. Uh, and as you can see, there are only uh, two wires that are actually connected to this jack and only two wires that are necessary to perform all the MIDI functions that the CR78 is capable of. Uh, so the kit comes with uh, some instructions for uh, drilling a, a hole in the back panel to accommodate this MIDI jack. And that can certainly be done. And uh, it's relatively non-obtrusive. It's just one hole and a relatively modest violation of the original uh, design of the cabinet. However, it occurs to me that um, wouldn't it be nice to keep this uh, CR78 as stealthy as possible, in spite of the fact that we've put in a new logic board, a new power transformer, and uh, undertaken a number of modifications. We uh, might want it to look stock from the outside. And what we could do, for example, is repurpose one of the jacks on the back panel or rather repurpose one of the holes on the back panel that are there to accommodate these existing jacks. And of the various candidates that we might be willing to sacrifice, it occurs to me that this variation jack, which is to be used with a foot switch to trigger a variation manually. Now we can trigger a variation manually from the front panel. And so if we were to sacrifice this functionality on the rear panel, we would still have the ability to access it from the front panel. Some of these other jacks, uh, the right, the, uh, these, the trigger, et cetera, uh, we don't really want to do away with because if, for example, we had the WS1, we might still want to retain that functionality. Similarly, we may want to retain the high and the low impedance outputs for uh, use in various contexts. So I've made the decision, we can do away with this variation jack and this variation functionality. And what I'm going to do is remove this panel and hopefully uh, install a new jack that will fit, and it has to be able to fit with this a PCB that houses these jacks. So I'll remove the PCB and the jacks and various other components that are attached to it, and then desolder this jack assembly at, attached to the variation functionality, and then install a new jack and uh, go from there. So one of the things that uh, is important here is recognizing that in spite of this uh, jack having three lugs, which took me a while to appreciate when I was trying to desolder it, uh, 
a little silly on my part. Um, in spite of the fact that it has three lugs, two of these lugs are actually ground lugs and only one of these lugs is uh, active. So this is not a stereo jack and we really need uh, or should have three um, connectors attached to the jack that we use in this particular uh, application. And so we need a jack that has these rough dimensions because this one actually sits in a printed circuit board. This is uh, an analogous jack, a modern replacement. And you can see that this one is actually just a little bit bigger. And so if we were to try and use this, we'd probably install it upside down because we don't actually plan on connecting to the printed circuit board. See, this jack here would f potentially fit uh, if we were to remove the, the ground shield. It would give us more play in the mounting position and uh, might work with the printed circuit board installed in place. So let's have a quick uh, gander at this. So how can we make this work? Well, what it requires is an adapter. And many of you will have seen these types of adapters, which convert MIDI signals to a tip ring sleeve in a 1 8 inch configuration. Well, all we need here is the same sort of thing. And this is uh, a quarter inch cable that I've made up to a female uh, DIN analogous to this and it's wired appropriately to carry MIDI signals. And so uh, this sort of setup will keep the CR78 looking stock and allow us to use the new MIDI DIN, DIN sync capability. What I'll have to do as well though is make up a little label for this position to make sure that it's obvious that this is no longer a variation switch and that it's now uh, part of the MIDI DIN sync functionality in the instrument. So I've placed the jack in the appropriate hole here uh, and used uh, again these isolation washers so the ground of the jack is not attached to the ground of the chassis and uh, I can now put back the the rest of the jack assembly and again want to put in the protection washers And other than this one jack now being a little shinier than the others, uh, which maybe I can even rectify by using the old nut, we've used the new nut. Uh, this again looks pretty darn stealthy. Uh, in addition, it's completely reversible. So by desoldering this, I've not done anything to the wiring uh, or the functionality of the instrument that can't be undone. All we need to do is replace this this jack and the PCB and we can regain the variation uh, switch functionality on the rear panel should we choose to do so at a later date. So that's an advantage, I think. To this approach. These don't have to be super, super tight. In fact, uh, using these 3D printed plastic sockets kind of ensures that you won't completely over torque these because the socket will actually give away if you apply a terribly large amount of torque. Whoops.
although I don't rely on that uh, for torquing. So I'm actually going to uh, remove the, the new nut. It's a little too shiny for me. And put on the old nut. And uh, I need to get some black with white writing uh, label tape for my label maker. And we'll install a MIDI label right here where it says DP1 variation. Okay. So what remains is to actually wire this jack. And uh, the wiring is here. I'll just uh, disconnect. I'll actually cut these shorter. stranded wire, so I'll tin it first. And just to triple check, which is which here, measuring continuity on the, what should be the ring. And I've marked that, I've marked that with some red. And indeed that is the ring. And the ring gets the gray wire. tip gets the green wire. There we are. And now for ground wire. So what I've done is I've fashioned a little ground wire and this is to ground this MIDI jack. And rather than taking it from over here where the audio is coming into the jack board, I'm going to take it from over here where the digital, if you will, uh, section is connected to the jack board. And hopefully that will prevent any interference between or minimize noise that might be coming from the MIDI uh, from contaminating our audio. And although I could have uh, connected through the bottom of the board. By connecting through the top, I can show you uh, how you can connect without actually taking out the board. And maybe I'm just being lazy as well because I don't want to take out the board again. Uh, but this is the ground lug on the jack. And where I'm connecting on the surface of the board, analogous to how I've actually connected the CPU to the logic board. Oh, and I see we've lost one of our dust covers. We'll have to make sure that gets back inside here. Um, that'll, what a pain that is. I'm connecting to the top uh, of the circuit board by attaching this ground wire to a 
leg of a resistor that is connected to ground, and that's the leg of this 100K resistor right here adjacent to this uh, 816 combi switch. So I'll just solder that up and we should be good to test. Well, that was a lot more stressful than I thought it was going to be. I thought I was going to simply uh, connect the quarter inch cable um, to the Arturia BeatStep Pro and uh, everything was going to work accordingly. Um, but that did not happen. I connected it and nothing worked. And it wasn't until I did a little bit of digging that I identified the problem. And those of you with a keen eye may appreciate that I have reversed the connections here between the wires that go to the tip versus the ring. And this is because what I had done is I had wired this up so that this jack was corresponding to the Arturia BeatStep Pro standard for a TRS MIDI DIN sync converter uh, or cable. And accordingly, what ended up happening was that I reversed the, well, not the polarity, but these two connections. Uh, because this isn't strictly a positive and minus type of uh, situation. What we're looking at is a current sink and a current source. And we can go into that in a bit more detail outside the context of this little video snippet. But suffice to say, uh, there are two standards for MIDI TRS connections. One is standard A and one is standard B. And if, uh, since I wired this to standard B, what I had done is re reverse the connections as they were coming out of the cable uh, that the Arturia was expecting on the end where its uh, connection is, um, which then again reversed it. And so uh, I needed to swap these around. So here we have the CR78 now connected to the beat step through this TRS connection, and we can we can sync it to clock, and so it's correspondingly uh, tracking to the clock that I send to it from the beat step, and if I put it into MIDI module mode by pressing in the waltz, shuffle, and slow rock buttons in unison, uh, what I can do is I can use the drum pads to trigger all of the various drum sounds. And uh, so this is working just as it should. Um, so what we have now is just the quarter inch jack on the back that was previously used for the variation uh, foot pedal and it is now our MIDI in and out. Well that's all for this installment in our series of videos on the CR78. Our other videos feature rebuilding the power supply, building a replacement logic board, and calibrating the instrument to make sure that it's working as well as it did the day it left the factory. I hope you enjoy this series as much as I did making it, and as always, your comments, feedback, suggestions, and questions are most welcome. One last thought before we go. While making this video, I learned of the recent passing of Dave Smith, the synth pioneer, founder of Sequential Circuits, and co-creator of MIDI. On May 31st, 2022, Dave succumbed to a heart attack while attending the Movement Electronic Music Festival in Detroit, Michigan. He was doing what he loved with people who loved and respected him for his countless contributions that defined the way we make music today. Thanks, Dave. Rest in peace. To all of you out there, please take care and thanks for watching.